I bet this is your first time seeing me as this, huh? Hi everyone, I'm Nuna Mogwai, aka Now and Scan here, back again. And I am finally back, it's been such a long time since I've done this. I was a little bit hesitant at first to try onto this new medium as I was talked about before, but I think I can get along with it. I have scanned into different art schools thinking that I was going to be an upcoming new student that is going to be fresh off onto their program, even though I am a college student right now currently. For a bit of a background about me, I'm currently an art school student right now who attended for the animation program, but then I switched out to be in a comics department. But now I'm currently on a crisis of what kind of path I really want to go on, so I'm taking gap year right now. I am more focused right now to be on an independent study. The thought of how I wanted to go into the portfolio review is that I wanted to test myself into thinking of what is my skill set of a college level of my art and portfolio, how it is, comparing what I would have had if I was a high schooler back again. In high school, I was very more adamant onto doing traditional art since I didn't have a drawing tablet at that time. So my major portfolio pieces in high school is definitely something that I would not have submitted in for art schools. I didn't start on becoming a digital artist until I was 18 and going into art schools. So I was pretty new and rustic into the medium until I developed on a little bit more further by the end of 2022. By the beginning of 2023, I had literally decided that I should try to my best to make a very good, stable portfolio digitally. I was going to be very confident in myself into doing it since I was feeling a little bit more burnt out than usual of school and then I wanted to motivate myself into doing a lot more better if I can do it independently on my own. It not only gives me like a really good amount of time to do only my portfolio but also like doing my own personal things that I really wanted to do that I didn't do in school enough or also doing like a lot more videos I had in mind, more things that I really wanted to be a lot more comfortable in. It felt very rewarding into knowing that I get to do the things that I wanted to do. Most of all my digital pieces were all made by beginning of 2023 and mostly all in the summer when I had time off of school. Along with that time, I was also playing a big part with my social media role of handling all my videos, making animatics, making more, editing, and doing all these sort of stuff. However though, I did get burned out multiple times I mentioned before along my past videos where I was feeling a little bit unhappy with my routine, how it goes. Sometimes it's not really what I expected and what's the reality of it and that's where I kind of was falling apart bit and bit. By the time it's already the end of 2023, I would say like in October, November, and December, usually my trimesters of those time gets very hectic for me, where I dealt along with like a great major depression era. And it's something that I really didn't want to look into or be for with it. It's always been like this every single year anyway. So, but I had no complete motivation to do my art anymore. I had no complete motivation to do videos anymore. So I felt a little bit more drained. However, though, I signed up for a portfolio review on January 7th, where it's my deadline that I have all things should be rounded up for. I did not get off of my depression until the beginning of January and that completely sucks because I knew for a fact for sure like hey Yen, the time is ticking, you only have one week into doing your portfolio to finish up. The only last thing that I did not finish up was doing traditional pieces. I haven't done gestural drawings in over the span of two years so it was overwhelming for me to feel like I had to do this in one week because I wanted to show them that I can handle traditional stuff. The last time I'd done traditional stuff was back in 2021 when I was already graduating out of high school so it was a little bit nerve-wracking there. I actually still do drawings in my curriculum for school but I actually just don't do gestural drawings. It's kind of weird and funky how it works. I had to be pulling multiple all-nighters so I can finish up some of the work in traditional form for my portfolio. Even though a few parts of them, I literally do mess up and thinking like, okay, this piece is literally not good enough. I need to try over again. And it keeps on cycling over and over until like the deadline was approaching. I also had to be doing a lot of new digital pieces because I feel like I wasn't at a right enough um, expectations of myself of I did good enough. So I had to do some newer things as well. The day before the portfolio review is that I had to make a presentation. Two different types of them because of the format, how it works for if you're going to share your screen. I made a Google slide presentation in a drive folder that I can link on to them. The school that I was anticipated to look forward to the most was SAIC, which is an art institute of Chicago where I was looking forward to just because it was like the only closest thing in my area from here. But however though, the other ones, I was only doing it for testing to see where am I at, how they would critique me in their own way. The school that I was looking into was one in Colorado and Maryland. 
I was first approached to the Colorado one. They really were impressive with my portfolio and gave me high remarks on it. Maryland was on a wait list for me. I tried to be patient at all for about 20 minutes and I was like, okay, I'm just not doing it. So I signed off and went to a different one. I tried to find any openings that I could do. Then I ended up finding Minnesota. I was actually born in Minnesota and raised there. So I feel like this is like a little bit of a circle that I could go into. I was feeling a little bit skeptical at first of the one who's admission to interview me since he was on his phone for a little bit. But then afterwards, we got along pretty well. He actually really did amazing amount of reviews of my work and how spontaneous it is, how playful it is, how it's very creative and everything like that. And it literally warms my heart during the whole time that we have conversed together. However, though, we were sadly interrupted. I had no idea what was happening. My thing was like disconnected from the call and I didn't have anything on my side. He did not have anything on his side. So it was very confusing at the time. So I just didn't know what to do. I didn't know for a fact I had to re-enter or anything like that. But I was feeling like I was sort of running out of time since like this whole program thing ends at 3. It's like already 12, 11 at best. So I decided to move on afterwards to move on to the next thing as possible for a portfolio. Luckily, I found out that SAIC was opening up for a review lesson on one-to-one. -one. I thought I was not going to get a chance with them because it was pretty hectic around with everyone else. Like, it's going to be filled up anyway. But surprisingly, there was nobody for SAIC, so I decided on going into it. However, a week ago, I actually really signed up for an appointment to be one-on-one -on -one with them for a Thursday evening. But this is going to be very helpful, I promise you. In a few minutes that I was entering in onto the private room with me and this admission counselor of mine, when you are with your admissions counselors, it will be a first thing off basis that you're going to be introducing yourselves and then go on to asking for contact information. They will be asking you for your name, your date of birth, when you graduate, etc. This would be a part of their records just in case they want to reach out to you or you're thinking about enrolling into the program once you got accepted. The interviewer was clearly off guard when I typed in what is my graduating year of high school and things got a little escalated towards strange. When I first gave him my portfolio, he did not have his camera on or screen or anything, so I would not be able to see anything what I kind of want to in my screen. So I had to keep asking if like you can show your screen so I can know what I can be seeing. And at first, when he was going through the presentation that I was showing for, for my portfolio, he got very confused of every single thing. Like he had no words and everything was awkward. He told me that it was pretty disorganized and everything didn't really make any sense or relation to anything. Sometimes he kept avoiding about reviewing my portfolio because he didn't find it really entertaining at all or impressive. Just so then I will jump onto the fact, okay, can I ask some questions about the school? Do you have any events that most people go into so they can recognize into a company? Something like that. It is all the questions he did is answered for me is that except he kept avoiding my portfolio. So I brought it up like, is everything in my art completely wrong? Is something about this is just not right with how I draw it? I was very insecure of what my art skills was because I didn't impress this counselor or anything about the school. I show him a different portfolio of the same thing, but an organizable way with numbers and how you can track them. Still though, in the end, he was actually on edge of how my portfolio is like everything does not make any sense you do not have to have these pieces and honestly it just hits my heart it turns out in the middle of the review he told me that like the new concept for doing your portfolio has changed you do not need to have traditional pieces i did not know there was supposed to be a concept or a theme that has to go along and so everything was my fault for not reading it it's maybe because that i didn't think about you know, versus of the years of what your portfolio was in high school versus what I did now. Times has clearly changed. In the end, this interviewer was persistently very on edge with me and aggressively was being rude towards me. Didn't give me any compliments towards any of my art and just, you know, shaking it off. After the time was up for the review, it was already 3 p.m. and I was pretty happy with everything I achieved so far with the first two interviews. I was actually glad for myself to have confidence again into having my art to ideally present them and feeling that I was good enough. 
cover though, even though the third option that I was looking forward to was not really what I expected to be, but I didn't let my guard down. Two days after the portfolio review, I decided on researching up the school again so I can try to find the admissions counselor and contact with him. I wanted to rekindle and to say for a fact that I wanted to thank him and say goodbye, so because I didn't get to have that chance when our call got interrupted. Luckily, he replied back forward with my email that saying he was going to do the same thing, is that, that I approached quicker than him, and he was sticking up like everything as well um, the same way, so I was very glad for that. The Colorado one left me a voicemail of reaching out to me saying they wanted to present me a scholarship that I did not expect at all that I was going to get. Um, I was still in school at this time, so this is like pretty shocking to me. I didn't expect anything at all that I was going to receive. They emailed me and hoping that they would see me being enrolled into their school and program, which I was like planning like, um, I'm not going back to school until I'm like 32 or anything like that. So um, thank you. But um. <laughs> I just didn't think. I'm actually pretty happy for a fact that I was able to receive it. If thinking back a while ago, if I was in high school with my college level art experience, I swear to god I would have been a much better person. Or even so, I should have just thought to myself like, if I would have just taken a gaff gear off of high school, then everything would have changed completely. My high school portfolio for me, I think during that time, if I still was able to going to enter it in, I don't think I should have not done that because like I did not have the great level experience that I had in college. Honestly, I kind of regret that a lot. Finally, the end of the portfolio review for this is that I got to interview again for Thursday night with a one-on-one -on -one with a different admissions counselor for SAIC. They were actually pretty nicer towards me than the last time that I attended to. It was mainly because of like Sunday's always like a rush and everything like that. You're trying to get through so many artists and seeing so many things, but yeah, it's such a little time. And yeah, I should have taken that into consideration for myself. They have explained it to me for a fact. They love absolutely everything in my portfolio, except that I did like over 32 pieces of it. So it was like a lot of things to go over through. The interviewer told me that my portfolio was highly well done. They love for a fact that I have a great use of color and how everything is, seems so like storytelling driven where I'm actually more endorsed with that. So everything about this was very much a high compliment towards me. And this is something that I find a great remarks to then from my last interview. And I think it just regrained that kind of expectation that I thought I was going to do for the school. Honestly though, I don't think I have any commitment plans into sorting myself to go back into school, not knowing what I would want to do for the rest of my life and how I would trust myself to be an artist again. Anyway, that concludes about everything I wanted to say into this video. It's been such a long time since I've done this anyway, because like, oh my god, I've been procrastinating so much for this project. Maybe it's because I have like a huge ordeal in mind that begins in the 2024. Not really great start, but hey, I am doing it. I'm still here. Um, but yeah, um, be sure to give out um, what your thoughts about this and everything of this whole new leaf of mine. I've been attempting and trying so hard to try to do this but I felt like it was so tedious for me to try to um, draw myself. I'm not really a person that really likes to draw myself per se. I like to joy to draw characters of my own or other fandoms. So this is still pretty kind of new for me. So this is something I should really get used to, mainly because like I didn't, I wanted to step away from the whole vlogging thing. But sometimes there's gonna be some here and there, depending on what kind of um, content am I interested of. But yet again, I'm here to be multifaceted artist, so there's not really a lot of bearings around there. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys on today's next video. Bye.